G'day, I'm Paul. So, something special behind me, and it's putting a big smile on my face. It's the all-new Land Rover Defender. It's been getting rave reviews everywhere in the world, and I've been really, really excited to drive it. And it looks really cool in person as well. Now, this here, it has caused a lot of controversy because the old Land Rover Defender, I was a huge fan of that. It lasted for ages and ages and ages. They just kept going along with it, which is kind of what made it cool. So they've got big shoes to fill with the all-new Defender. It needs to be good off-road and also needs to be good on-road as well and safe and all that kind of stuff. Now, this right here is the mid-spec P400 SE. So it means it's the six-cylinder mild hybrid and it's mid-spec in terms of the model grades. It's priced at just over $100,000 and it competes with things like, well, Funnily enough, the Land Rover Discovery, the Mercedes-Benz G-Class, and the Jeep Wrangler as well. Today, we're going to do a detailed review and a little bit of mild off-roading as well, just to see what this is like with all the new technology. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes up on the screen there. Or if you're on YouTube, lucky you, you have chapters below that you can use to skip ahead. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit subscribe and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a satin-finished car. Now, before we get into the design, I want to run you through what this actually is. So, it sits on what's called the D7X platform, which is all new to Land Rover. This doesn't share any panels with any other Land Rover product, and the D7X platform also has EV components, which is why this has mild hybrid, plus also a future plug-in hybrid coming as well. Torsional rigidity, it's important for an SUV, but also important for an off-road vehicle when you get weird angles and suspension flexing the body. This here has 29 kilonewton meters per degree of torsional rigidity. Now, if that doesn't mean anything, put it into context by saying that this is three times more rigid than a standard body on frame vehicle. So it is built to do some proper off-roading and it should mean that it also handles nicely as well. Now, what about the design? I really like it. In pictures, I thought it looked a little bit strange and a little bit goofy, but in person, this thing has absolute presence. There's a stack of colors to choose from, but some of them like this Pangea green come with a satin wrap option. So this one here is finished in that. So it's a bit like my Supra turns a lot of heads but there is one thing I don't love and it's this yeah it is cool to have checker plate here but why can't we have real metal I don't know plastic just looks a little bit cheap big defender branding along the front there if we have a look down here you've got some black highlights with this brushed aluminium which is actually plastic but it sort of sets apart those colors just to give it a little bit of uniqueness over on the side you can see the radiators tucked in behind that vent you've also got vents over here that lead you through to brakes and also engine cooling and then in terms of headlights whole range comes standard with led headlights with these daytime running lights that look really cool this can also be optioned with matrix led lights so if you want to see what that means you can actually watch our headlight comparison by clicking up here around the side here you have standard 20 inch alloy wheels with an all-terrain tire now this has the all-terrain tire but you can get a highway terrain tire you just tick the box when you're ordering the car and I think this is really cool because these tires will have been part of the development process and it means that you are getting a tire that has been developed for the car and is also good off-road check out the size of these brakes so the p400 comes with bigger brakes if you look at an entry-level diesel they have smaller calipers so you have some proper stopping power the whole body uses an aluminium structure which means it is lightweight and I say that tongue-in-cheek slightly because it still weighs around 2300 kilos but it is lightweight compared to what it could be or compared to something like a discovery now like here so this is this is just a blank a bit of a fake uh, inlet but on the other side this is actually one of the breathers so you can get a snorkel as well and that's where they fit it and then it's permanently affixed to the car up here you've got piano black on that wing mirror looks okay but you can see here it's already starting to get a little bit yucky so uh, I just wish they didn't use piano black on cars it really just I don't know, it doesn't stand the test of time, and I reckon this would look cool in a matte finish. You can get different roof colours as well. So this one has the white roof, but you can get uh, body coloured or black, depending on the spec that you've chosen. It's actually a heap of customization you can do. I love design throwbacks like this window here. We'll talk about that later on. You can even get like a ladder on the side here with a tent that sits on the roof. You know, the options are absolutely endless. Um, come around to the rear. LED tail lights all around, so you have them for the brakes, also the indicators and the reverse lights as well. I love the design of this at the rear because it is just literally square at the back. It's just over five meters long with the spare tire on the rear. And the spare tire is really the thing that extends the length of this vehicle. Once you remove that, it's not actually too long. In person, this car looks a whole lot meatier than it does in pictures. And you can see in terms of the height there, how high it is. Now, the other interesting thing as well is that with this shark fin aerial, you also have the rear view camera built into there. So another cool feature. Okay, so we are inside the Defender. I'm excited to show you around this cabin. Uh, let's start with the key. This is what it looks like. You have lock, 
unlock a button for headlights to come on or just some ambient lighting as you approach the car. The boot, a panic button, and then on the back there you have the Land Rover symbol. It's a proximity sensing key, so you just leave that in your pocket and then once you jump inside, you have a start button there. How cool does this look? Um, I remember when I first jumped into this, when we picked it up, I was like, holy crap, this is just something else. In fact, it kind of feels a little bit different because I was at the Frankfurt Motor Show when they first revealed this and they had an adventurer drive a Defender down from above the stand. It actually, it was a little bit scary because it came down like this almost vertical slope and I thought that it was just going to roll over and hit people and, and we had a good chance to have a look at the cars, but there were so many people around. This is the first time I've actually had the chance to get up close and personal with it. So there are just a lot of details here. I'll start with the door. So you have this trim up the top here, you have exposed body panels beneath it, and then these screws that you could technically undo and take the door apart if you wanted to. Then follows on here to the dashboard where you have these soft items that are stitched and run all the way through. This is actually a structural component of the car. It's magnesium. You can configure the colors inside the cabin too, so you can get open pour wood here if you want, or this uh, black element. It really is just a modern version of the old Defender in terms of just how rugged they've made everything look, even down to here. Look at that. You don't get carpet, you just get like rubber. You can get carpet if you want, but that means you can brush it out and probably hose it out if you wanted to. And then the seat design as well, you've got fabric and then the perforations there too. Yeah, it is just a seriously cool looking cabin. So let me know in the comments section below, what do you think about it? Is it a step too far or do you think this type of styling is what Land Rover really needed to do to keep that Defender name alive? Now, what about the touch points? So this center section is kind of firm, but soft it's like this rubbery material and it's the same story on the door there so as you're driving along you've got really nice points there to stay in contact with how soft are they well we've got our durometer we've tested the main surfaces in this car if you want to see how it compares to other cars that we've tested use the link in the description below now what about build quality it's a Land Rover so a lot of you are going to be asking about that it actually feels like it's built like a tank there's really nothing around here that's moving around too much so Fingers crossed this stands the test of time. Moving on to infotainment. So Pivi Pro, it's the all new infotainment system for JLR. Today I'm gonna to take you through a detailed review of the 10 inch Pivi Pro infotainment system and also the screen ahead of the driver. So you can see here, it's a bit of a change in terms of the layout. You now have these three main pillars and then shortcut buttons on the side. So we'll start off with navigation. Here it is here, so the inbuilt system is nice and quick, it responds very nicely. The other thing that's worth keeping in mind is that this is an always on system. So it means when you get into the car as a cold start, you can start entering navigation destinations immediately. You don't need to wait for the system to boot. The old car, I uh, remember we had a Jaguar I-Pace as a long-termer that had in-control touch pro. It just took forever when you cold started the car. So you're just sitting here waiting to put navigation entries in. So this is a really nice setup and you can see there that it is incredibly high resolution and very quick to respond. In terms of audio, you have AM, FM, DAB plus digital radio, along with the ability to stream online stations as well. They actually offer you a package effectively that allows you to have a SIM card built into the car. You can just insert it here where it says nano SIM, and that gives you that internet connectivity. Strangely though, you also need that for traffic for navigation. So you've got to actually have that enabled and then logged in for traffic to work. Back onto the home screen here, in terms of telephone connectivity, you can hook your phone up just direct through Bluetooth, or you also have smartphone mirroring. It is a cabled system, not wireless. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I'll show you what Android Auto looks like. So you can see here, it's not quite a full screen integration, but they keep the side menus so you have shortcut buttons available. It's nice and quick as well. The resolution's okay. It's not super, super sharp like we've seen in other cars, like uh, Jeep models. They're, they're really high end and sharp, same with Ford. This seems to be slightly dulled down a little bit there. Let's have a look at what Apple CarPlay looks like. So you can see there, it is a full screen integration aside from those sidebars. Okay, so a tiny bit laggy there as you flick through the screens, but this looks like it's much higher resolution there than the Android Auto. So uh, that looks really nice. If you wanna see a comparison between Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, click up here to watch a video we filmed recently. Now the good news here is that the voice recognition has been greatly improved too. So you can use voice recognition through your smartphone when it's connected to the infotainment system, or you can just push the button and use the native uh, infotainment system voice recognition. That also works really well and is improved over the last generation. 
Over on the side here, you've got the shortcut buttons, but also a secondary menu that has the rest of your controls. You can see here, especially for Defender, you have all of the off-road controls, uh, so you can hook up your towing and trailer. This car has the optional trailer package, so it allows you to steer the trailer remotely from here without touching anything, which is really cool. The Wade Sensing program, the four-wheel drive controls, and also vehicle dimensions. Now, this is quite an interesting one because this is Incredibly handy when it comes to fitting into car parks. You need to know what the height of the vehicle is. If you get accessories fitted to the car, it will also tell you the story here in terms of how much space they take up. The other good news here is that it's 5G ready, which means when 5G does become available, the SIM card and the modem that's built into it will fully support that. It also comes with over the air updates. So it's nice to see that they are getting with the times on that front. It also has the ability, if you're in the middle of nowhere, to connect to a satellite phone to download those over the air updates so they can deploy fixes while you know, you're trekking through the center of Australia or, or something like that. So really impressive setup. The other cool part here is controlling the camera system, especially on Defender. You can scroll between the different camera views and then shortcut to certain views of the car so you can get ultra wide angle and then flick between them. You also have an off-road view too. So if you wanna do off-roading, you can see where the wheels are, where the ruts are. Yeah, it is just a really nice setup. Okay, moving on to the screen ahead of the driver. It is a 12.3 inch display, really high resolution, and it gives you all of your critical information. When you're off-roading, it'll show you what the differentials are doing, what kind of wheel extension you have. Over on the left-hand side, you have your speedo, then tachometer. You can customize all of this as well. If we click here, you can actually change the layout of everything and go between the menus. I'll show you what that looks like. If we go over here to layout, you can pick from the one dial setup, the full map display, a media screen, or the driver assistance screen. There is a high level of customizability there. So I quite like that. And I don't know, it's just a really big step forward when you consider the old Defender just had a few analog controls. Now, what about speakers? This specification comes with a 14 speaker Meridian branded sound system. And in terms of connectivity, you have USB points all over the car. I'll show you the ones up the front here first. There's one up here, which is a USB A port, and it's there so you don't have to have cables running along the cabin. You can just have your items placed up the top there while they're charging. You've got a USB C port down here, another USB A port, a 12 volt outlet. You can get wired wireless charging as an option. Now, safety. You get a whole stack of safety features. So autonomous emergency braking that works at low and high speeds also has pedestrian detection. You have a blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. You also have a lane keeping assistant and a lane departure warning. You also get radar cruise control and a clear exit monitor. Now that is a light on each of the doors that will prevent you from opening the door if there's a cyclist, another car coming just means you won't accidentally open the door into the path of something that's going to hurt either them or you. And then in terms of parking, you have front and rear parking sensors and the cameras are just what I showed you before. You can rotate around. You've got an off-road view and also a towing view as well if you're hooking up a trailer. Righto, storage. So there's a fair bit to get through here. I'm gonna disconnect this. Where are you gonna put your phone? So the phone can virtually live anywhere. You've got this neat little tray just there. You can pop it in the cup holders. You can have it up there if you want, down there, wherever you want it, there's plenty of room for your phone. Um, now, bottles. So we'll start off with our coffee cup. So a lot of the times, small coffee cups like this, you will spill easily if you can't secure them. So if I get rid of the key, it doesn't really fit in the big cup holder. It moves around too much and it's hard to get hold of, but there is a smaller size cup holder here that perfectly fits a coffee cup. And then in terms of bottle as well, that will fit in the bigger one and also the smaller one. Inside the door, you have loads of storage there as well. You also have storage up here. Center console, this is massive. You can option a fridge here if you want to. Otherwise, it's a fairly deep storage slot, big enough for a bottle. You've also got a glove box down here that isn't too massive, but will fit a bottle. And finally, you have a sunglasses holder. But in terms of other storage locations, so you've got that storage along the top there, the storage behind the screen, storage over here, and storage down here as well with a little rubber mat. You've got extra storage under here. There really is just plenty of places to put your things. Moving on to comfort. So all of your comfort controls are run through here. You can enable your dual zone climate control just by hitting auto and then individually change your temperatures. If you want your heated seats on, it is a push of that dial. You then turn it up and down to turn the heated seats on and off. In terms of seat adjustment, both the driver and front passenger have electric seat adjustment with this car. It has a few options on it. That also comes with seat memory for both driver and front passenger. You get these nifty things. So standard sun visor with a built-in vanity mirror, but 
you tilt that around to the side, that extends, which is all pretty straightforward, but I haven't seen this before. A center one as well, which is kind of cool. Over here, you also have grab handles. In fact, you've got grab handles everywhere in here, so it's gonna make life easier getting in and out with another handle up the top there. Now, what about the seats and comfort? So the seats themselves are really comfortable, but you can see that the base is really flat, and it means that I don't know, you move around a fair bit as you're driving and it's really hard to find a comfortable position. I just wish they had more bolstered down the bottom. Outside of that though, the steering wheel sits nicely in the hands. It is a pretty big wheel. It's kind of like driving a bus, but for the most part, it makes off-roading fairly straightforward. All of these controls are very easy to reach as well. Okay, back seat. I like it back here as well. So grab handle to get in. And in terms of room, there is just acres of room here. This seat is really far back and I have tons of knee room. Toe room's really good. Headroom is exceptional. And can you hear that? The rubber floors continue back here. Um, in terms of center armrest, that pops down with two cup holders. Pop those in there. It's got rubber grips as well. And then your bottle can also fit inside the door easily. On the door there, you see that clear exit system that I mentioned earlier. Air vents down here. You also have a little tray there for storing trinkets and connectivity, connectivity galore. So you have like an iPad slash device holder built into here, a five volt outlet for charging, but then additional outlets here, two 12 volts on the side, and then two more USB-A outlets as well. Isofix points and map pockets. By the way, this is a five seater, but you can get a jump seat up the front. So you can actually have three across and also seven seats, which means you get an additional two seats for the third row. Now the other cool Cool thing here is this. It's kind of like a throwback to the old Defender and also the Discovery. You actually have a real window built into that roof. It gives the cabin a little bit more light and I think it's, I don't know, it just gives you a little bit of authenticity and a reminder of the Defender that built its way to what we see here today. Okay, let's sort cargo space. Now, how do you open this? You have to grab the handle here. There's a little button behind it and it swings the door open. Unfortunately though, it means that you are always going to need to leave enough room between your car and a wall. If you're parking, I live in an apartment and it means I have to go in forwards if I buy one of these, which is a little bit annoying, but just something to think about. Now, space-wise, you have a little over a thousand litres of space here without the third row in place, and that's measured all the way up to the roof. There are some clever features though. So you've got some buttons on the side that raise and lower the suspension. It's currently in the access height mode, which is the lowest it will go. You can push that to go a little bit lower if you need to, and that means getting things in and out is going to be easier. Now, have a look at all these surfaces. It continues on with that theme inside the cabin where it's all quite rugged and rough and tumbles. You can throw things in and not worry too much. You can pop your extras under there, including the, the actual cargo blind itself and the recovery hook. But you can take this out as well, and you can use this outside the car to hose yourself off before you get back in, and that's entirely washable. So clever feature there, and if you are an adventurer, you're going to find that useful. Now, what else have we got here? So a stack of hooks off to the side. You have a 12 volt outlet, and you also have little hooks just off to the side there as well. And then nets to hang things in, plus fire extinguisher holder, bottle holder, whatever you want off to the side. Let's throw our bags in so you can get an idea of just how much room there is. There you go, stacks of space. And now what I'll do is show you what it's like with that second row folded flat. There is a trick to this. You can just throw the seats down, although you can't do it from here. You've got to reach in for that. It just won't be flat. What you can do though, is drop the headrests by pushing the button on the side and then come around here. A little bit of a trick here. So you pull these seats out of the way and what you'll notice is this allows the seats to then fold flat. And that means you get a flat load floor and that exposes just under 2,400 litres of cargo space. Okay, so we've hit the road in the Defender. Powering this particular model, the P400, is a three litre turbocharged inline six cylinder petrol engine. Makes 294 kilowatts of power and 550 newton meters of torque. It's mated to an eight speed automatic transmission, but more importantly, it uses a 48 volt mild hybrid system. Now we've spoken about mild hybrid systems before, and if you've seen our review of the Mercedes-Benz GLE, I go into a bit more detail about what they are, why they exist, and how they work. But in this particular instance, it stores energy that would otherwise be lost as heat when you brake, puts it into a battery, and then when you need to accelerate, it gives you that extra boost. Now, let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna slow down here, and we're just going to give the throttle a punch. Normally, you'd have to wait for this to wind up for the turbocharger to get boost, 
but all I'm going to do is sink the foot in. I can only feel that torque coming on thanks to mild hybrid components. And then once the turbocharger comes on, it just pushes you along nicely. So it is a really, really nice package. It's incredibly smooth and in and around town. It gives you all the zip that you need to make this feel far smaller and lighter than it actually is. Okay, let's talk fuel economy. So Land Rover claims 9.9 .9 litres per 100 kilometres. We'll rifle through this and see how we're doing. Okay, we're sitting on 11 litres per 100 k's, which is pretty decent. I think that's where it should be for a vehicle this size. And obviously the more highway driving you do, the better that figure is going to be. Now you don't have any drive modes, so to speak. Well, not for on-road driving, you just have comfort and eco. But if you do want instant sport response, you just whack it over sport mode, it drops back a few gears and it's ready to rumble. Um, the one thing that is worth noting as well is there's no paddle shifters. So that's a deliberate thing by Land Rover because they didn't want, I don't know, the, the image that you associate with a Range Rover Sport or you know, Discovery or something like that, they didn't want that associated with this. You can still manually change gears if you need to, but just an interesting thing to note. Land Rover reckons it'll do zero to 100 in 6.1 seconds. Let's put it up against the stopwatch and see how it goes. Now, what about handling? So I'll slide it over to sport mode. We've got a couple of corners coming up. <laughs> it is seriously impressive. I don't know, it's, this is gonna sound weird. It almost feels like a Range Rover Sport in the sense that it sits just nice and flat through corners and it doesn't feel big. It doesn't feel like a Defender. It's, it's, it's genuinely bizarre. Okay, let's talk about ride. I think this is the thing that, that Land Rover has done best. The ride is sensational. So we have air suspension on this vehicle and that gives you almost an unlimited amount of configurability in terms of the ride and handling tune. But what they've done is they've really softened it out nicely, but not made it too soft. So when you hit those continuous undulations, it doesn't float like a lot of um, American vehicles do. It's really nice, nicely tight, nicely composed, and it's really just fun to drive. It doesn't feel anything like the old Defender in that sense, but you still get the benefits of the air suspension for off-road driving. What about visibility? Um, look, it's, it's pretty good. I can see all the way down the front of the bonnet there, thanks to that faux checker plate stuff. Out the back, it's not amazing because the spare tire is there, but you do have this duver here that gives you a clear view out the rear thanks to that shark fin aerial and then the wing mirrors are massive and have blind spot monitoring built into them it's also fairly easy to park as well because of all the cameras and sensors that it has so it doesn't feel overly intimidating behind the wheel let's talk about road noise it's pretty quiet despite the fact we're running all-terrain tires i literally can't hear anything i'm getting a little bit of wind noise coming in through the wing mirrors but that's about it, it is nice and smooth. So with a three and a half ton towing capacity, it means that you could, in theory, tour around the country with a caravan on the back and be perfectly comfortable behind the wheel. Okay, so let's just quickly touch on some negatives. Um, one is the idle stop system. So it uses that 48 volt system to have a smooth departure and also an in, in, imperceptible, sorry, start. So you come to a stop, it switches off, it's all nice and quiet, but then you let off the brake, it's got a, a hold feature. When you get on the throttle, it just gives you a bit of a shunt. It's actually not that smooth. And I think that's that hold feature kind of interrupting things. So we'll come to a stop again, it switches off, get on the throttle. Yeah, it takes just a little bit to realize what's going on and then it shunts you a little bit. So it's not as smooth as some of the systems we've seen in the German cars like the Benzes. I think they, they do a really good job with those idle stop systems. It's just a tiny bit too harsh here. Okay, turning circle. It is not amazing. Just like the old Defender, well, it's not as bad as the old Defender, but 12.84 meters. It means you're probably going to have to do three point turns every now and then. It's not quite a city car. Okay, it is time to do a little bit of off-road driving. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying the old Defender was kind of the king off-road. So while it was fairly easy for Land Rover to get this right in terms of on-road dynamics, this really had to excel for off-road. Now the specs are pretty impressive. So 38 degree approach angle, that's the angle of the face you can approach before you hit something. 40 degree departure angle, that's the same angle but in reverse. You have those excellent figures because of the short overhangs. 
means that you aren't going to clip anything when you do some off-roading. Ground clearance of 291 millimetres, so that's higher than even the highest of dual cab utes on the market. With the air suspension, this can lift by an additional 175 millimetres when it needs to, so that means you're going to clear pretty much all obstacles. The air suspension also offers 500 millimetres of suspension articulation. I'm going to show you what that means in a second. You also have the ability to ascend and descend 45 degree slopes and also sit on a 45 degree tilt angle. Now, while we're going to go up Log Mountain and down our rocks for a little bit of light off-riding, I just wanted to explain to you what a lot of those figures mean. So we have a 4x4 info screen, which is displayed right now. That shows our tilt and pitch. We also have the ability to see what the suspension's doing and whether the centre or rear differentials are locked. This car comes standard with a centre differential lock and you can option a rear differential lock too. This has that, so it shows up on the screen there. And as we drive, this is going to give us all of that information. I'm going to manually raise the suspension height because we're going to be doing a little bit of tilting here. Now, this is probably not gonna look that extreme on the camera but I can tell you right now that when we come into this I can see that angle increasing 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 <laughs> okay so there it is there we've peaked at 23 degrees I feel like I'm going to fall out of my seat here from the outside as well you'll see the angle that the car's on I can tell you now this is going to make you feel sick if you're inside here now there's still more to go this can go up to 45 degrees before rolling over it is just a stomach churning feeling in here Okay, we'll progress through here. Now what's happening right now is the car is demonstrating what's happening with the differentials. As we get to this seesaw here where we get wheels off the ground, rear diff is open, centre is locked. This parking sensor is going nuts there. Okay, now let us get to a situation here where we have one wheel completely off the ground so I can show you what that suspension articulation looks like. Okay, here we go, rolling into this situation. We'll get that wheel off the ground, which is right there. Now let me demonstrate what I mean on the outside. Okay, so this is what I mean by suspension articulation. It's the amount of distance your wheel can travel in relation to the body. 500 millimeters here on the Defender is absolutely massive. Now, if you have seen our four-wheel drive controls explained video, you can click up here to watch that. But if you remember that one, we had a D-Max and that wheel was completely off the ground at this exact same point. So this gives you an idea of how much more travel you have with this air suspension setup. When you do have more wheel articulation and you do have more contact with the ground, it means you have more traction and you're able to get yourself out of sticky situations. Now, Let's go to Log Mountain and see how it goes up there. Okay, so we are at Log Mountain. Uh, there are a stack of drive modes here to choose from. So I think Land Rover calls it terrain response. You press this button here and then you use one of the climate controls to flick through them. You've got everything from grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, uh, sand, rock crawl, wade, and also the configurable programs. What we'll do is flick it over to uh, maybe let's go mud ruts. I think that'll work. We've left the suspension in its high setting. So right now the car's tailoring the stability control for the type of terrain you're telling it that you're on. It also has hill descent control active, which you can control using the steering wheel. I think it's going to walk up here fairly effortlessly because it's all nice and dry. Yeah, this feels, this feels good. It's actually quite comfortable as well. Nice to think that you can go do some hardcore off-roading and just be comfortable behind the wheel. Um, so yeah, this stuff that we're doing here is, is very soft off-roading. Um, we're hoping to get this behind the wheel of our four-wheel drive expert shortly, who will be able to put it through its paces, but for a novice like me, it just makes life really effortless. Okay, we're going down our rocks here now. I'm deliberately picking the hard path here because in every vehicle we have here, it always touches. So I'm keen to see in its highest setting whether we actually get any knock underneath the car. At this point here, we would have heard something. Damn, that is impressive. That is seriously impressive. I didn't think the air suspension would work that well off-road, but it's coping, it's coping really well with this. Um, let's test out this hill descent control. I'm just gonna roll out of the throttle and reduce that speed to its lowest setting. That's pretty good, actually. Um, so you can hear it locking the wheels there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Very impressive. Um, and to cap it all off, you have 900 millimetre weighting depth. It also has a weighed program. In the weighed program, uh, it effectively, once you tell it that you're going to weigh, it'll start measuring where the water's coming up and it will then also close vents so you don't have um, any water ingress or anything like that. Um, yeah, really impressive. I do like that it shows you how deep the water's getting, but generally if it does get too deep too quickly, uh, a sensor that tells you it's too deep is probably not going to be all that useful. 
Okay, Land Rover Defender. I've got to be honest, I thought the UK publications that first reviewed this car were being just a little bit patriotic and generous with it, but I can tell you right now, it is really hard to fault. It is just a weapon off-road. It's really good on-road. It's got a really punchy engine as well, and there's a new six-cylinder diesel coming. I don't know, it just puts a smile on your face. It makes you happy to drive it, and I think that's what cars are all about. You know, it's not just about fuel economy and getting from A to B. It's about really just enjoying the car that you own. So, yeah, really impressed with this, and so much so that I don't know, I, I want to buy one. In fact, in this exact color, I think it looks really cool. So watch this space. I might end up doing it if I can convince my wife. Now, let me know in the comments section below, what are your thoughts? I know a lot of you are going to complain about reliability and all that sort of stuff, but in Australia, at least, this comes with a five-year warranty, which means it is fully covered. But I'm keen to get your thoughts. Land Rover owners, what has your reliability experience been like? Are they as bad as some of you are complaining about? or? some of those people that are complaining, not actually Land Rover owners. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and share it. And if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a car that puts a big smile on my face. But until next time, drive safely.